Hello, welcome to Anson Crafting's Occasional Series in MATLAB Tutorials. Today uh, we'll be doing uh, some video compression and we're looking at uh, video. So the basic idea is we have frame 1 and we also have frame 2 and we want to reduce the transmission load. So one way of doing it would be frame 2 minus frame 1, get the differences, quantize it and then so you'd send the original frame plus the frame of differences and get the reconstructed frame too. Now this will work provided uh, what that the two frames are quite similar. So let's have a little look. I have the code written here. Can't publish it at the moment, sorry about that, so we just have to run it and we'll get loads of figures in front of us. So let's just go to frame one. So there's the first frame. And there is the second frame. So just look at that there. So they look quite similar, but they're not that. You see the boat is moving left to right, and the mast is stationed. So you can see here that there's a reasonable gap between here and here and then when we look over here the gap isn't quite as wide. That's about the only discernible thing. Now we see this little boat is moving here as well. So if I slow down again, normally what we're going to you could send frame one, you could send frame two, but yeah, as I've explained in class, the transmission load is a lot. So one alternative, this doesn't always work, we could send the first frame and then the encoder will get the differences between the second frame and the first frame and just send the differences. Then the decoder on the far side will have the first frame and then in the second frame it will just add on the differences to the first frame to get the reconstructed second frame. Now this will work provided what? That the differences between the two frames are very small. Sorry about that popping up. So Provided the differences which you see in frames are fall, this method will work. But if the differences are large, we need something called motion compensation. So let's just look at the code there. We've read in frame 1 is boat 1, frame 2 is boat 2. And just here we're creating them to singles. Okay. So normally grayscale is 0 to 256. But we've converted the image on a 0 to 1 basis. Why is this? Because... We'll see why later on the not 256. I suppose you could say it work, but it's easier to work in si singles. Okay, so the first figure up is the histogram. There's figure one. So that is the histogram of that. Okay, there's a lot of figures up, so that's just the histogram there. Okay, so I'm going to delete this because there's a lot of frames open and I get a bit cluttered. And then we also get the histogram of um, frame 2 and on line 25 here we also convert it to single as well. But let's get that up. There's, sorry, that's, that's frame, that's the second frame. went by it there, apologies. And there is the histogram of the second frame. Really, the histogram doesn't tell us much, it's just to remind you how to get a histogram. Pixel count and the Y, and then the 0 to 256. We're looking at the grayscale here. Okay. So I'm going to shut figures 2 and 4 down, because there's so many open. It's a bit confusing. So I've got as far as line 26, 27, and now we're going to get the difference, and we're getting the differences between the second image and the first image, and remember we're getting the differences of single images. Okay. So, and remember, if they're single, they can be plus and minus. Okay. Sorry, they can only be plus. So a slight mistake there. Not to 1. So we're going to, on this line here, we're going to look at the histogram of the difference image. So there's the histogram of the difference image. And as you would imagine, because the two, of course, in my frame one and frame two, the histograms were sub 
attracting a lot of like from like. So we would expect a lot of black and we'd be well unless there was something very big happening, we wouldn't expect anything up here. Now if something big happened like some sort of unforeseen event like say a plane started to fly across, we might start to get values up here at the one end. Remember one in single corresponds to two fifty five in the not the two fifty five in the white being two fifty five and black being zero. So as we expect, minor differences all around, say, well to the naked eye there, that's about 0 0.05. And what does that mean? Remember, 10% is 25, 1% is 2.5, you know, etc. 0.1% is you know, 2, uh, 0.25. So very, very small differences there. Okay. Now, so Oh yeah, just one thing here. I displayed the same thing twice, and here there's a pair of square brackets, and this one. So I diff. So let's look at. Um, that's not exactly what I'm looking for. There we are. That's that one, and there's that one. Just so we can see what's going on, and why did I? Why are we getting different answers? Well, I diff is just a naught to one. So, and remember we showed you the histogram. There was it was nearly all black. So I don't know. Even on my screen here, that looks pretty uniform black. But there is little tinges of white. When I, when I say white, I should say non-black. Now, how come we got this vague outline of the boat here? Well, the square brackets here. So what does the square brackets do? It sort of does a, in effect a contrast stretch in effect uh, where it makes the lowest number zero and the highest number is one and then it does a proportional stretch for all values in between. So you can see there that you know, the boat has moved vaguely to the right, okay? And you can well very vaguely you can see what's going on. And as you would expect, because that um, I'm sure that, that flagpole was stationed, you can't see any flagpole at all around there. Okay, I'm going to shut these down because, as I say, there's loads of figures available. What I did there was I got the total difference. I I did a sum sum, so I summed all the columns and then I summed all the rows, and I got the total uh, between this and what value did I get there? Just a little look. Uh, the sum of I diff is 97.908, okay. Then I quantized and I dequantized. Now I had it by 4 and then divided by 4, but I was getting no zero. So what will that do? Well, I multiplied by 8 and then I divided by 8 and then I rounded to the nearest whole number. So I'm gonna just a total of that there of I diff Q is, I just can't see it now, total of I diff, oh there we are, is 27, so it was 97, then it's 27. So what I'm trying to say is I diff Q, I diff Q, you know, with the rounding, uh, sorry, with the uh, multiplying by and then the dividing by eight, we've got more and more zeros. So if we get more and more zeros, we could, if we were compressing the difference image, we could run length and code at the very least. And then we could, well, or we could Huffman encode, and then we can run length and code the Huffman encoding. But I hope you're trying to get across that the more zeros we make, and then we're only left with the fairly big changes, that we won't get a perfect reconstruction, but we'll get, you know, a reasonable one. And But the reason why you would do this here is I didn't do the run length encoding here, but if you run length encoded, you would can compress a lot because you have lots of runs of zeros. So instead of sending, say, at the maximum run of run length encoding is 63. So instead of sending 64 zeros, you send one, or sorry, zero by 63. So you're saying you, you've got 64 bytes down to one byte. Hope that's okay. Then what I did on this on line 45, I added the differences, the quantized differences, back to the original one. 
and I showed the reconstructed image. There's the reconstructed image there, which doesn't look too bad now. I've obviously killed the first one, but you can see visually it's fairly close. And then, just get rid of that one, then I was just wondering, well, what's the difference between the reconstructed one and the original one? And to do that, uh, I got in this line here, I got the mean square r, and the mean square r is the observed minus the expected to be squared. So the observed is I am the, obs the observed minus the expected. So there's the observed, the reconstructed one, and the expected is y. That's sorry, it's back to front, but it doesn't matter. Why it doesn't matter because remember, you have to got to square your answer. So whether it's seven minus six or six minus seven, it doesn't really matter because you're going to end up squaring. Okay, I did my sum sum and then I mean squared. I divided by the height and the width. Now by rights, I should have used a mean square error function, but look. It's there, and hopefully, I mightn't have explained it in great detail, but if you're looking at this, you'd have an idea of what I was trying to do. And then on line 50, I displayed the mean square error, and the mean square error is point three knots four, point zero three knots four. Now remember, they are for singles, and really, if you, uh, for grayscale values, the answer would be uh, bigger, but it's still small quite small. Why? Because the reconstructed frame and the original frame too are very similar. Now just to finish on this, this works only if what the differences between the frames is very small. You can just encode sending the differences but when things start to move quickly this won't work. Okay so thanks for listening. Hope this helps.